How you guys doing? I'm in front of a computer today and I'm looking at the results of probing a quarter. And I probed this thing at 0.3 millimeters and it was done 100 uh, points by 100 and that was enough to fit something the size of a quarter. So I got the alignment of X, which is this one here. Got that one pretty good. Y, on the other hand, it is on an angle, and not only that, but over time, like this job was probably like three hours or so, and it has like a bit of a curve into it. And this was running in a dark room, so it's hard to say. I think probably just the machine being on and warming up the garage is probably changing the uh, you know the, all the metals expanding. So that's probably what that was. The laser was on my drill press not attached to the CNC machine. So it's possible that thermal expansion was enough to uh, be the cause of this. Other than that, you can see obviously there's a bunch of little artifacts. So there's ones in the positive and there's some holes there. And you can see them down there. So there's some of the negative. Um, I'm not too concerned with that because what I can do while the machine is running or after it's done, I, it, can, it can look at the data and I can, and I can like determine mathematically where these outliers are and then I could find those and then just rerun them on those or yeah it's possible I could also just make a list of like x70 y40 and so on and so forth and just rerun it on those manually that might be an option other artifacts you can see especially up here when I when it picks up the shadow there's a lot of lines so the way this thing is running it's going along x and then once it's done, it moves over and then it does another one and then so on. That's how it's like scanning an image or probing and making an image. So I get these, these things here where an entire row, or at least not, not an entire row, but an entire chain along will be offset. Like this is like, yeah. And then like this, this goes all the way up to here, but then it's not here anymore. And you can see in there the dimples and stuff on the Canadian coin. Like it, over here, you, you then see like there's, like it's not, it's not like it's across the whole thing. It, it, uh, yeah. I think this is caused by compression on the webcam uh, sensor. I think what it's doing is it's, it's compressing it. And then like, you gotta remember that the, uh, the webcam is seeing this thing blip up and down constantly all the time. But I think something Something related to that is, and I think it's compression is making those artifacts. And then, yeah, other than that, you can see sort of like high frequency kind of stuff. And I think this is just due to vibration in the house. So I think attaching this, attaching the laser to the CNC machine, I think would solve some of that little high frequency noise. Uh, yeah, so that's the quarter at 0.3 millimeters. It's, it's enough to see and read. Canada right there and I think this says 2008 I think or six it's hard to say but yeah overall like I'm you know I'm happy with the results uh, there's definitely a lot of room for improvement and uh, I think I can probably drop the subsamples this one was done with 15 subsamples and then removing two of them and uh, I think I could probably go down to something like five or six subsamples and then removing one or, or two of those and that should speed this whole thing up considerably. This whole thing was, uh, so 100 by 100, that was uh, 10,000 10, samples and 15 subsamples, so 1.5 million altogether. Uh, other than that, yeah, I think what I'll do is probably once, I'm, once I solve, some, or see if I can solve some of these artifacting issues, I will redo this on probably a smaller coin like a penny just because it's a lot smaller uh, I think I'll also at the same time figure out a the G code instead of just going and making a, a grid like this uh, I'll work within the confines of a circle and only sample those and then that way all that blue area I won't have to wait for sampling that it's been uh, the last couple days has been mostly just trying to figure out the networking stuff because Python sockets are a pain in the butt to run 
uh, within Qt threads. So I eventually scrapped all of that stuff and now I'm using Qt networking and that just solves everything because that way I can, I can close this UI. Um, this, well, this one's running on a, a Windows machine workstation right now. But when this tool is running, it's, connect, it's running on a Linux machine on uh, Linux CNC and it's talking to a laptop that is running the webcam sensor tool. And uh, if I, when I, before or previously, when I, if I had closed one of those tools, I would have to close everything and it made a big pain in the butt to, to deal with everything. So that's all fixed now. Uh, other improvements on this tool, I have saving and loading uh, the data. I just store it into a Python pickle and that seems to work good for now. I also have an export thing so I can export all the data to CSV. I have a job specific thing. So over here on uh, probe job, I only have one. But if I have a job where I'm doing something like uh, in situ machining, so let's say I'm I'm not trying to scan something, I'm trying to flatten something, and let's say I, I flatten with the CNC machine first, and then I run over it, not something like as resolution as this, but maybe like maybe every one centimeter or so, uh, I can probe the surface and I can find the offset from what the the CNC machine did and what the lo what the laser is saying is flat and I can probably do something where I machine either as I'm going uh, machine the offsets down or sample everything and then go and then machine in a in a grid form or or like a 3D uh, surface and machine it that way to make a flat surface. So that's all coming down the pipes. I gotta figure out how to get more consistent sampling of the of the data first before I I do all that because things such as this like these if I'm if I'm machining like this is gonna cause a huge issue if that's if it thinks that that's where the surface is. Same for ones like that. Yeah, and then obviously these uh, these uh, lines which are rows on the x axes. Uh, that's definitely something I gotta figure out. But that's where I am with this tool. Uh, so far, I'm pretty happy with it. I didn't think I'd be able to get results like this. And uh, yeah, I will see you guys next time.